Hi everyone, Katie here. Welcome back to another layout video. Today I have um, a, a food photo <laughs> and I am going to be making a mixed media background. Now I'm using these Bria Reese watercolor creams. I am using Distress Oxide in Fired Brick and Crackle and Campfire. And I am using my scrapbook.com pop of color that is uh, Pearl and Cherry Pie. And I'm doing a few different techniques. I have the packaging technique here. I just kind of smeared my crayon, uh, my watercolor cream all over the place. And I brushed on um, some other Distress Oxide. I put water all over it. This is a pre-gessoed paper um, that I had done already. And I am using a, a silicone brush to just kind of get everything everywhere and I want it to be all kinds of different colors of like red or like kind of, it ends up being more of like an orangey red especially right now before it all dries you can really see all the the orange um, that comes out in this layout now it's very very wet um, and obviously I don't want to work over a wet surface um, I am going to uh, use my heat tool to help it dry a little faster um, but I do not want to use anything to like clean it up, like paper towels or anything, because that'll take some of the pigment away. So once it's all dry, I use my new We Are Memory Keepers, um, What I guess this is like a, a hole punching tool, paper piercing tool, um, and it gives little lines so that I can stitch there. And I do not, you know, make you watch all the stitching. The stitching does take forever. Um, but it's something that's new for me and I'm enjoying doing it. So I just kind of stitch some random lines throughout my page. I think this gives nice texture and it kind of goes along with the, um, you know, theme of my layout here, which is definitely like messy, interesting, but, um, I really like how it turns out. So my photo here, this is from, um, our trip to Nashville. We just did like a little weekend trip with some friends and we went to a restaurant called Party Fowl. And this was one of the most spectacular meals ever. It was right up my alley because um, it is fried chicken and you can get it in you know hot chicken, various levels of heat. I chose um, no heat <laughs> personally, but it is served with a side item and beignets. And I mean, it was just so good. And that is definitely, I mean, I know it's a ton of junk food, but delicious fantastic and actually every single person in our party got the same uh, meal it was so good so I definitely wanted to document it I have my paper or I'm sorry my photo printed on um, photo paper and it already had the little white border around it and I add like kind of this red orange color matte I know it's hard to see with um, the sunlight coming in here now but it um, it will get better as the video goes on now I'm creating a journaling box and I'm using that same photo, or I'm sorry, that same paper that I used to map my photo with and um, adding, you know, white over top to use that as journaling space. And I think this works out well. I have noticed that if I'm creating like a real journaling box, it tends to make my layouts look a little more clean, maybe a little more professional if I'm like actually writing lines on them and... I mean, obviously, these are things that really make a lot of sense, but sometimes I just get rushing and I don't want to do it, but I really think it, it ends up looking a lot better, especially on a layout like this where it's you know meant to be messy and have a lot going on with it. And that, that journaling box just like, oh, you know, kind of brings you back to it and says, hey, don't forget that, you know, this is about the photo and the journaling. So I'm using uh, one of my Papermate flare pens to create the lines. Um, as I've said in a recent video, I did learn that these are um, acid-free, which is fantastic because I had a bunch of them and they come in so many colors. They don't come in different widths, though, so if that's a big concern for you, I would stay away from them. And I'm journaling then in a black pen just so that it stands out. Again, I'm writing a little bit about what I already told you about how this meal was fantastic and it is like my perfect meal because it is basically chicken fries and donuts, you know? 
so fantastic. It also had like a, a bourbon maple glaze on the beignets and it kind of like got on the fries a little bit. It was just so good. I highly recommend if you are in Nashville, Tennessee, go check out Party Foul. Um, it was really good. We enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, they definitely uh, had to roll us out of there. It was a lot of food. Definitely a larger meal than I normally eat, but totally worth it and a lot of fun. So now I'm thinking I want my layout to kind of be diagonal, like have a diagonal line, kind of like my, um, you know, lines there. Um, but when my title is so big, and I did uh, go online and I found the exact, you know, font and everything of the restaurant. So I cut that out on my Cricut and it's so large that it really works best to go in the center. Um, so I decide though, just the paper is not enough. It's not pretty enough. So I do some heat embossing with it. I take an older embossing pad. This is one that was a gift or a hand-me-down or something. Um, and I use it for projects that I, I'm not sure if it will destroy my Versamark pad. Um, so I'm putting a little bit of the ink all over all of the, um, you know, words for the title. I'm really squishing it down there, and then I'm using a, uh, I think it's technically an embossing tinsel. It's like an orangey red glitter, and I think it's really pretty. I got it on clearance, and I didn't think I'd ever use it for anything other than Halloween, and then I found a bunch of uses for it. So I go ahead and I heat emboss all of that, and I actually have to go over it and do it twice so that I'm able to get, you know, that deep, rich, you know, embossing powder all over. And I don't know that I would have had to do it twice if I had, um, if I was using a better embossing ink pad, but I didn't want to, you know, risk messing up my nice one. So I just used the one that's not as nice. And it all worked out, and I really like the extra pop that it gives my title. Now I am putting everything together. So I decide to use a little bit of tissue paper behind my photo just to again add more texture but also to kind of draw your eye to the photo. There is a lot going on in this layout um, so I don't want my photo to get lost there. I'm also popping it up on foam for the same reason and I'm it, in order to adhere anything to the actual mixed media background, I'm using double-sided tape. Right now, I have some scrapbook.com double-sided tape, which is very nice. Um, it comes on a much larger roll than my regular Dollar Tree double-sided tape, which is really nice because I'm you know, not running out of it as fast. So I'm putting this photo like basically right in the middle. I've got my title there up at the top. And then I'm not exactly sure where the journaling box is going to go. And I'm popping my title up on foam. And let me tell you, this takes forever. So I do not make you watch all of it. But it's not only getting the intricate little parts in tiny little bits of foam, um, but also from doing the heat embossing and where the um, embossing ink came through the back of the paper, um, the foam does not want to stick very well. Now, once I actually got it on all of there and stuck to the layout it seems to be adhered just fine but putting those little bits of foam on embossed or on, I guess over the embossing ink was terrible it took forever and it kept coming off I had to use my um, tweezers and it it really was not the most fun experience so I do like that it's popped up on foam but I wish I had something you know, that would have worked a little nicer. So now it's all popped up and up where I want it. I really, for whatever reason, wanted to keep that, you know, diagonal line with my journaling box, but I decided it really makes a lot more sense if it's all centered. So I'm putting that down right there in the center of the layout, and I was trying to do a few more embellishments. I know that there's a ton going on on this layout already, so I don't want anything too much. I don't want a whole lot of stickers or you know phrases or anything. Um, so I kind of had a hard time deciding. And ultimately what I did come up with was using these Pink Fresh Studio Metallic Pearls in gold. So what I really love about these is it's a pouch full of basically not sticky enamel dots. And they're all gold and they're in different um, sizes. I think there are four different sizes in this bag. And they're fantastic. I've used them so much and I've only had them for like a month. Um, so I kind of sprinkle those around. Now I do have to go around and use some liquid adhesive and my little jewel picker to 
pick them up and stick them down. Uh, but after, you know, a moment or two, they're all stuck down. And I think that was the perfect um, finishing touch that I needed to add to my layout. So once I finish that up, my whole layout is complete. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.